Welcome back, Devils fans. And we just dropped a painful one by a score of 2-1 to one to the Los Angeles Kings at the Prudential Center. And this one really hurts. We are five minutes away from at least a point, And the Kings score on a late power play to give them the go-ahead goal. We had some chances down the stretch and just couldn't bury anything. Devils lose 2-1. to one. Extremely painful loss. And... Um, you know, while we needed the points and this was a missed opportunity, the, at least, <clears throat> you know, the bright side of it to me was that the Devils played a decent game and they, they look like a team that can go on a playoff run. And if we continue to play this way, we will get wins and we will make it super interesting. It really sucks that we are just moments, you know, five minutes from that point. But, you know, got to... Uh, just pick our heads up and look forward to the stadium series. Now, we have a big showdown with the Flyers on Saturday at MetLife Stadium, and it's another absolutely massive game. Um, just look at the scoring. It was it was 0-0 after 1. You know, the Kings are in a, trying to hold on to their wild card spot, so this is basically a pre-playoff game almost for both teams really looking to solidify themselves in the standings, and it was a tight one. We go to the second period. And Kopitar gets that shorthanded goal at 8.07. Pretty sloppy. It was at, uh, you know, at the tail end of our power play. Jack and Luke were both out there for a while, both you know, back-checking. And Luke gets kind of beat, as does Jack. And Kopitar buries it, gives him the 1-0 lead. And um, that was a rough one. Shorthanded goals always suck. Uh, you know, Kopitar made a great play on the penalty kill there, and he gave his team the lead. And then at 12.58 on the power play, Toffoli ties it up. Beautiful play. He's parked right out in front, right where you want to be, and gets inside position on Drew Doughty and bangs home a rebound, giving the Devils the 1-1 tie, assisted by Jesper Bratt and Jack Hughes. Tied up at 1 after 2. We go to the third period, and... The officiating seemed a little, you know, there was a lot of plays. It was kind of bullshit. Um, in the third there, I think it was Bastion got absolutely molested um, where they didn't call it. And then it was right It was right after our, our uh, a previous power play expired. We came right down the ice. Bastion definitely got, you know, interfered with. They didn't call it. And then the Kings come down the ice and we get called for a penalty. And on the ensuing power play, at 14-23, Byfield scores, giving the Kings a 2-1 lead, and that's all they needed. Game ends 2-1. Again, terrible loss. It's painful, but it's not like we played a dog shit game. You know, there was a couple chances we did not bury. Looking back, that kind of hurt when Jack was... Oh, yeah, that's another thing about the officiating. Yeah, that, that exchange where Arvidsson elbowed him in the head, and then Jack kind of retaliated with, like, a little roughing. The fact that we didn't get a power play after that was, was kind of bogus as well. Like, Jack barely did anything. You know, and they gave him a roughing to negate any sort of power play on that scenario. Um, you know, it was kind of Bush League. Uh, Jack was furious. And then when he comes out of the box, after that penalty expired, he had a breakaway, missed on that, and then he almost had the rebound wide open net, and he blew that. And so, though, you know, we just got to bury our chances. Had he buried that, who knows? The game, we may we may have won 2-1. to one. Who really knows? But the offense definitely needs to start burying those chances. We made Riddich kind of look like, uh, you know, as we do with a lot of goalies, made him look better than he is. He played a good game for the Kings and got a, a solid uh, outing for them and got them the win. And so, you know, got to pick up our heads and we got to get to MetLife. But let's look at some of the, the game stats. Shots on goal, 28 Devils, 29 Kings. Face-off percentage, 43.2% for the Devils, 568 for the Kings. We were one for five on the power play. They were one for four. And that's really, you know, the power play was in a really bad dry spell up until a game or two ago. But when you get five power play chances in a game like this, we, we really have to convert on two. I mean, that's just, you know, one for five, that was our only goal. But, you know, had we been able to convert on a second one, that's a big deal. So the power play definitely still has tons of room for improvement. Hopefully we could kind of get that back to the level of where it was early on in the season or at least, you know, something resembling that. The, the power play was red hot uh, at the beginning of the year. Obviously, you know, nobody believed it would continue at that clip, but uh, lately it's been kind of shitty, and so they need to definitely pick that up. Hits, even 20-20. Block shots, 21 for the Devils, 13 for the Kings. 
Devils with six giveaways, Kings with three. Devils with five takeaways, Kings with four. So pretty much, you know, most of the statistics and pretty evenly played hockey game as it appeared when you were watching. Closely contested, another playoff type game, and the Devils are going to be playing in these pretty much for the rest of the year. We're desperately searching for points as are most of the teams we're playing, whether it's trying to keep their spot or climb up the standings like we are. And so, every, you know, most of these games are going to be a fight. Teams aren't just rolling over. Um, Dawes played a great game as well. He had that amazing glove save. I don't remember if it was in the first or second period, but an absolute dandy. Gets across and just a sure goal. Beautiful glove save from Dawes. He had a couple other great saves too. And, um, you know, you know, who knows? I would like to just see Dawes. Just continue Dawes. A lot of interesting things surrounding goalies today. So early in the morning, they announced that Utica Comets goaltender Isaac Poulter was signed to a two-way deal, which... You know, kind of seems odd out of nowhere that they he signed this deal. And so with all the goalie rumors that have been swirling around this team, coupled with the fact that they just signed Poulter to a two-way deal, coupled with the fact that Vitek Vanacek is still mysteriously has a lower body injury, I don't know. It all seems kind of crazy to me. Then more reports came out today that the Devils and Flames – um, potential trade for Markstrom is not quite dead yet, and it seems like that's kind. Of, those talks have been revived, and so when you see all these moving parts with VTech still, you know, injured, Poulter signed to a two-way deal, the Markstrom deal is not dead, and so now I have to believe that, you know, Fitz is out there really trying to get a goalie. Whether we land on Markstrom or someone else remains to be seen. Markstrom is my personal second choice of all the names out there. UC Soros being my first, just strictly from an age perspective, he could be a solution in net for the Devils for, you know, seven, eight, nine years. He's only 28 years old. Would love to see him. Markstrom's 34. He could be a legitimate goalie for the next two, three, maybe four years. Uh, depending on the return, again, as it always comes down to, I don't know if I'd pull the trigger or not. I would love to see Markstrom here if the circumstances are right. Would love to see Soros even more, but again, who knows what the feasibility of that trade package going to Nashville would be. But it seems like something's definitely up. Fitz is working the phones. Again, with VTech being MIA and Poulter signing that two-way deal, I'd have to believe that Fitz is going to include a goalie of some kind in a trade package going out for a goalie, whether that's a Markstrom or a Soros. I'd have to believe that either VTech Vanacek Nico Dawes or Akira Schmidt will be going the other way. It certainly seems that way to me, given all the evidence that we're looking at here. And I'm very curious to see what it is. Obviously, um, I would prefer in any deal for a goalie, if we are sending a goalie the other way, I would obviously love for it to be Vitek Vanacek and to keep Nico Dawes and Akira Schmidt in the system. Again, my number one preferred choice would be to bring in someone like Markstrom and pair him with Dawes for the time being. And then you would have, I guess, Akira and Poulter in the AHL. But who knows? Maybe teams um, would take a chance on Akira Schmidt, or maybe teams would say, you know what? Uh, I will take the chance on Nico Dawes. I mean, he's shown a lot these past few games to me, and it seems like he could be a legitimate guy too. I would always prefer to bring in the more veteran proven guy, which is why I don't want to just ride with Dawes. And I still want to get that, you know, more marquee goalie, if you will. But who knows now? It's all very interesting. I just feel like something's something is imminent, and I feel like we will get a goalie, I feel like, in the next week. I mean, this has just been going on for too long. Um, and with, with Dawes playing pretty well over the past week or so, I'd have to believe that it may help Fitz have a slightly better position than he did a week ago where we were just bleeding and losing games because of goaltending. Now Fitz could kind of try to play the position of, well, you know, I have this Dawes kid. He's not terrible. He's playing better, so I'm not that desperate for a goalie. Um, I don't need to send you all of these assets that you're asking for to get the goalie. I'll just pass and ride with Dawes. You know, again, I don't want him to do that, but it just seems like Dawes playing better over the last week could only help at least the optics, um, you know, for Fitzgerald, not, as, not coming from a place of as extreme weakness in net as we were a week or two ago. But let me know what you thought about the game. Let me know what you, anything you think about the Stadium Series game um, for Saturday. Let me know what you think about all these new updated rumors. 
What do you guys make of the Poulter contract? Do you think a goalie is getting moved? What do you think about this mysterious VTech lower body injury? Um, you know, anything else? Throw it out there in the comments. Love talking to you all. What a gut punch of a night, though. Devils lose a painful one by a score of 2-1 to one at the Rock. And I'll be back soon, guys. I'm working on some really cool stuff. I'm going to need a beverage from the bar cart here tonight. It was a very, very sad night. Very sad night, but at least the boys showed up and we didn't just play like shit. And, you know, we got outworked. Couldn't bury a couple chances and that. And some games go like that. But I am much more confident in this group than I was a couple weeks ago. We've been playing fairly well since the All-Star break. And if we keep it up, we're going to get points. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give this thing a go. I have faith that we are going to make a run. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Until next time, friends, let's go 